Welcome to JSA TV, where we're covering the latest news, trends, and innovations from the world of the digital infrastructure space. And we're talking to thought leaders um, for the last two days at the Data Cloud USA event in the Lone Star State of Austin, Texas. And speaking of thought leaders, I got one here right next to me. To my right, we have Mr. Mike Crise. Mike is the CEO of Radius DC. Mike, welcome to JSA TV. Thanks, Dean. Thanks for having me. You bet. So um, I've got a bunch of questions here. Probably won't ask any of them. Uh, <laughs> I've got a lot to, uh, to talk to, to you about, but really quickly, um, edge demand in secondary markets. Why don't you talk to our viewers a little bit about what those secondary, why why we're in those secondary markets and what it means to uh, the, the businesses and organizations um, uh, who operate in those markets. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so Radius DC owns, operates, and develops uh, what I call scaled edge uh, uh, data centers, uh, not, not, not your traditional carrier hotels, uh -huh. but ones that have a connectivity density within these secondary markets uh, in which folks are looking to deploy applications uh, that need to be next to those population centers and, and adjacent to that network. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, and we, we talked about a lot right before the camera started sure. rolling, and I'd like to continue that conversation. Sure. So if, when we're talking about uh, these, these edge data centers, and we're talking about uh, the people uh, and the institutions that they serve, and how ultimately having that edge data center in those markets are how those communities ultimately kind of get lift, lifted up and, uh, and stay relevant, some of those businesses, as we kind of move into the next decade, and with the technological shifts in advance like that. How do you see what you're doing as it relates to helping advance those communities? Sure. So, you know, the applications that are out there today that are developed are needing to be disseminated into multiple markets. Um, typically, that has, or historically, that's been done through a, more of a hub and spoke model through the hyperscalers in which they have a fair amount of density in what we'll call the tier one data center markets. Mm -hmm. More and more, we're seeing that disseminate into these secondary markets. Um, for both performance and, and data collection needs for these applications that need to be near the people that they're collecting data from or serving, as well as the network to go collect that. So that's where we're seeing the big growth. And you know, with the advent of uh, artificial intelligence mm -hmm. and what's been going on in that, we just see that trend continuing over time to where the applications that will be developed out of those uh, modeling exercises will continue to need to be developed and, and disseminated into these secondary markets. So uh, you put your foot right in the door of the AI discussion. So I'm going to kick it wide open. So where does you know where does uh, Radius DC fall in the AI discussion? I mean, I know that you were a, 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 a technology enabler for for the folks who are uh, in your facilities. But when when we're talking about AI and kind of what things look like 10, 20 years from now, you know, where do you see these these edge data center deployments kind of fitting in uh, into that niche? So I'll say a couple of things. One, one, uh, one thing that we're doing at Radius is thinking about what the next generation of application will need mm -hmm. from a power density, from a floor loading density, yeah. uh, from a proximity to the network. Um, the current generation of applications tend to be lower density and tend to be more network centric. We're seeing that tick up. So first thing that we see over the next 20 years is as these AI platforms start disseminating mm -hmm. through and, and inferencing their applications out to um, local data sets and local users is you're going to have to have a the next class of data center mm -hmm. uh, that will help uh, uh, satisfy those demands. So again, higher density from both the power and and weight perspective, but more importantly, they're going to need, need to have larger scale. Historically, you would see scaled network edge deployments, you know, in um, less than a megawatt. Mm -hmm. Now we're seeing that increase to one to five megawatts, and we think that trend will continue. So. Uh, size will continue to matter, mm -hmm. but it won't be the large scale, you know, hundreds of megawatts demand yeah. for these types of centers. These yeah. will just be a, be a little bit smaller. And so uh, to those lower density uh, customers out there um, right now, um, the message from you is we haven't forgotten about you. We're, we're, still, we're still here and you're still here and we're going to continue well, to serve you. The applications that they're running are very relevant. Right? Yeah. And the platforms in which they're uh, running on have multiple years of useful life. Uh, everyone's gonna go through hardware refresh cycles, and as particularly as they get uh, higher density from a uh, compute perspective, um, you're still going to see those workloads increase, but these are largely CPU-based workloads yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, today, and will continue to be 
for a number of years. Uh, the GPU-based uh, workloads, which drive those higher densities, both from a weight and, and, and energy consumption, are coming. But we want to be able to accommodate for those in the future while absolutely maintaining a stable base of customers who will need that CPU, CPU-based workload for years to come. Excellent, Mike. Thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Absolutely. You bet. And thank you, viewers, for watching JSA TV. Stay connected and happy networking.